If you have a microservices architecture on your backend, your services are most likely integrated and can communicate with each other in one way or another. To test this integration between the services, you or your team most likely uses end-to-end -end tests, which can be a bad choice for many reasons. First of all, end-to-end -end tests are very slow. You need to spin up all dependent services. These dependencies bring flakiness. Debugging that flakiness becomes a nightmare. You need to read the logs of your cluster to find out which services actually errored out. Not to mention all the services you'd have to set up for different scenarios. And last but not least, how on earth can you know the test coverage of your microservices communication? This is a common issue in many real-world situations. At eBay, a team called Notification Platform faced exactly the same challenge the challenge of maintaining compatibility with all consumer and provider APIs. In this scope, a consumer service is the one that requests data while provider responds to the consumer. To address this, they adopted contract testing and built tools to integrate the consumer-driven contract testing workflow into eBay's development ecosystem. But we're gonna dive into that in a minute. I hope you find this case study educational and learn a couple new things for yourself. Just a quick reminder though, your likes and super thanks really help me keep this channel going. So I would really appreciate if you do that. And if you want to support this channel and be notified about new videos, you know what to do. And now let's get started. So eBay's main goal was to find a reliable way of evolving APIs with backward compatibility. Since their APIs were based on the open API specification, they evaluated the possibility of ensuring API compatibility via open API schema evolution with semantic versioning. This approach is wholly managed by the service provider. For example, even if renaming a data attribute in response wouldn't break the consumer's data consumption or deserialization, we still need to be conservative in making such change, as we don't know whether a consumer uses this particular data attribute. So the open API specification on its own doesn't really reflect how the API consumers depend on the schemas. This solution also doesn't address the fragility of the end-to-end -end testing problem. So they had to find a way to make the consumer's requirement more formal just like in the provider's API specification. They first looked at the behavior-driven development, basically an approach of writing consumer tests with the intended behavior of the API in mind. Collaboratively defined by the API consumers and providers, they could now implement provider-side test cases to cover the verification of the behaviors in the unit tests. This seemed to fill the information gap between the consumer and provider. But what if the consumer changes the requirements without updating the behavioral specification? What if the consumer and provider APIs are maintained by completely separate teams that don't have many touch points with each other within the organization? Using BDD to ensure API backward compatibility still largely relies on the human interactions of developers who are performing this process. So eBay couldn't take this as the final solution. Given these flaws, they turn to contract testing. The usual contract testing goes like this. Let's say you have two microservices, a booking service and a payment service. The booking service wants to fetch the payment details. So it's going to be the consumer, while the payment service is the provider of that data. The collection of HTTP interactions that are going to happen between these two services is called a contract. So in our simple example of a single query, it's going to be an HTTP call to the payment endpoint with an ID, and we're going to get back some data like this. The biggest benefit of contract testing is revealed here. In a scenario where we do integration testing or worse, end-to-end -end testing to test that our microservices work as intended, we issue a request from a consumer to a provider, and this provider can have its own provider, and that provider can have its own provider, and suddenly we have a black box with a dependency chain. In contract testing, however, we never have those things talking to each other. We're only testing one service at a time, and we're gonna capture the consumer's view of the integration test with the provider. So step one is testing the consumer, and that's where we capture the contract. 
And what we do is we let the consumer talk to the mock that our contract testing framework provides. So we make a request for the payment details and we get some response. Then we repeat this process for all the needed interactions that the consumer would also use in a real production environment against the payment service, AKA the provider. So in this step, the framework is going to check that the consumer does all the intended requests correctly and that it can handle the return to response. If one of the tests fails, then the contract hasn't been fulfilled by the consumer and the CI CD pipeline shouldn't succeed. As a step two, these interactions are going to be recorded and forwarded to a broker who plays a key role in helping us with automating these tests. Now the broker is going to share these tests with the provider. It's going to replay the request that it captured from the consumer, but this time against the provider's API. This is where we verify the previous contract by expecting the predefined responses to be returned from the payment service. The cool thing is that the framework is smart enough to know how many consumers this provider has and it's going to run all of them in a batch. If the data returned matches our expectations, then the contract is fulfilled. And we can be pretty confident that the communication between our microservices is stable. The generated contract is then shared across teams so that they can include it in their own CI CD pipelines. Here's a very quick overview of the code for a contract testing of our use case. So in our example, we're going to be using PACT, a framework that we're going to look into in a minute. But basically, it simplifies everything. So in consumer spec JS, since our tests are consumer driven contract tests, we're going to define our consumer booking API and a provider as well. And this is the controller method that we want to mock. We're fetching the payment details from the payment API while being the booking API is the consumer, right? So we defined all the needed parameters. This is the URL that we're going to be fetching. And this is the expected response that we want to get from the payment API. So we're going to describe it here that payment uh, ID one, if we make a call to this endpoint, we're going to get a 200 and provider that accepts a request uh, with this data, which is basically this controller here, is going to respond with this data, which is again the expected body. And this is it. This is the contract for one of our endpoints. Okay. And the provider, what it does, it basically takes the JSON file that gets generated after you run your consumer.spec.js and it takes this JSON file, which is basically the contract between the booking and the payment service, and it's going to verify this. How does it verify? Well, first of all, it starts the payment service, and then it runs this contract uh, request that we defined here against the actual API, and then it expects that the, the actual payment API responds us with the data that we were actually expecting here. Okay, it's pretty, pretty simple. So now we know about contract testing, and we saw a quick example with PACT. Well, PACT is one of the frameworks that can automate that whole process. And actually, which one did developers at eBay choose? Well, they chose exactly PACT, which is the best contract testing framework at the moment, in my opinion, even though eBay went with PACT, they patched it up with custom functionality that fits their needs better. To be precise, they built a unified provider verification service. When consumers change the contracts, providers only need to verify compatibility with the new changes. PACT provides a webhook to bind each consumer to its provider validation CI CD jobs. However, for each consumer, developers need to repeatedly set up service accounts and authentication configurations for PACT broker to trigger the verification process. I know this is a bit too detailed maybe, but long story short, in real life scenarios, you also need to help the broker to be able to authenticate itself against the services. That's what we're talking about here. Therefore, we can use a proxy service to manage the common steps of each validation and free the consumer from managing these configurations. As a result, what happens is, first, service consumers use the packed initializer portal to initialize the environment. Then 
the second step. The verification service stores this configuration metadata. Then service consumers publish the contract changes to the Pact Broker. And then as a step four, Pact Broker detects the changes and forwards the changes to the verification service. And last but not least, the verification service reads the target verification job information from the data store and triggers the CI jobs. I don't want to leave you without telling you about the best practices of contract testing. So here we go. The robustness principle. The robustness principle advises sending minimal but necessary data and being open to accepting diverse input. In contract testing, this translates to consumers sending only essential request parameters to providers and providers surplus response attributes not disrupting consumers. Second, focus on the communication contract rather than the function. Contract testing bridges unit testing and service integration testing. It doesn't aim to replace functional tests, but rather eliminates reliance on real provider responses to validate communication data format. Tweak the testing pyramid. Now with the introduction of contract testing, you can reduce the number of E2E tests you have even further and overall just shrinking the pyramid since now you have more tests in place. All right, friends, if you like this video, I'm pretty sure you're going to like this playlist of mine called popular software architectures as well. So go check it out.